Near the terminal door, my driver said, Mr. Rush, if you'd prefer, you can wait inside the terminal while I get the limo. I shook my head. I can handle it. When I followed Ryan out of the terminal, the cold air hit me like a baseball bat to the chest. I kept my mouth shut and breathed through my nose, but it didn't help much. After living most of my life in Florida, breathing Alaska's winter air was almost as bad as taking a polar bear jump into freezing water. We made our way to the limo, and I settled in the back seat while Ryan took care of my bags and then slid behind the wheel. I closed the partition between Ryan and me. He hadn't seemed overly chatty, but I didn't want to give him the chance to start. My business in Fairbanks was my own, and I wanted it to stay that way. Ryan had barely pulled out of the airport parking lot when my BlackBerry chirped, signaling an incoming email. I was surprised it had taken this long for someone from the office to contact me. They'd managed on their own a lot longer than I'd expected. I pulled it out and looked at the sender. It wasn't from the office. It was from Tim. The email had only one line. Have you written the letter? I sighed and wrote back. <sighs> Not yet. Seconds later, the phone rang. I was tempted to let it go to voicemail, but I knew that Tim wouldn't let me off the hook that easily. Hi, Tim, I said, hoping that I didn't sound as guilty as I felt. Tim got straight to the point. So why haven't you written it? I've been trying, but I can't find the words. Where did you get stuck? I hesitated a second and then said, At dear mom. I never said it would be easy. You were right. This is important, Jonathan. Promise me you'll write the letter today. Tim, I... Promise me. I didn't reply for several seconds. Tim knew that although I had many faults, dishonesty was not among them. If he could get a promise out of me, he knew I'd be honor-bound to fulfill it. After a few more seconds of silence, Tim's gentle but insistent voice broke through. I'm waiting. All right, I said. I promise. I'll do it before I go to bed tonight. Good. I could hear the satisfaction in his voice. I'll call tomorrow to make sure you followed through. I'm sure you will, I said. I smiled as I closed the phone. When Tim latched onto a reclamation project, he was like a pit bull. There was no letting up, and it just so happened that I was his current project. Dear Mom, I shook my head and scratched out the words. That wouldn't work. Mother, that wouldn't work either. I crumpled the paper and threw it into the trash can. I couldn't explain it to Tim, but this was why I hadn't been able to write the letter. I didn't even know how to start. How do you write a letter to your mother when you don't know what to call her? When you don't even know her name? When you don't know the point of writing to her in the first place? I tossed my pen onto the desk and walked over to the window. The lights of Fairbanks twinkled in the distance. I wanted so badly to just go home and forget the whole thing. This was a crazy quest, an exercise in futility, but I promised Tim I'd follow through. And even if I were the kind of guy who breaks promises, I'd never break one to Tim. He had saved my life. Crank it out, John, I told myself as I sat back down at the desk. Just get something on paper, if for no other reason than to get Tim off your back. So I picked up my pen and began to write. Dear person who gave birth to me, I don't know what to call you, I don't know your name, and I don't feel right calling you mother or mom because you were neither of those things in my life. You did bring me into the world, and for that I guess I can thank you. I don't remember what you look like. If I were to meet you on the street, I'd walk right past you. There are snatches of memories, but they are fleeting and cloudy. But although I don't remember you, I do remember the day you left me. It was the worst day of my life. I've hated you for most of my life, but I've got to get rid of the hate. A very good friend told me that if I didn't, it would destroy me. I think he's right. 